then I went over to my manager pretty much straight away and he said you know that that's it you've done it like you've won the overall and then from that point I didn't know whether to like laugh or cry or like sit down or stand up I was just like Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, this you crazy mother. Um, well, we've just left the airport We're on the way to Stellenbosch. Um, I've been coming here the last couple of years. This is my third time here. And um, come here for a training camp just to get a bit of time on the bike in some nice weather before Christmas. It's a treat for us Brits to come out to South Africa and train in the winter when I guess at home it's cold and miserable and to come out here and it's completely different. It's 28 degrees now. Brilliant food, brilliant drink, the company is amazing, um, some great trails. I guess moving into next year it's kind of a bit of a different a slightly different attitude towards it. I feel like uh, I'm the one with the target on my back now and I've got to kind of prove that, I've proved that I can do it and I can be at the top and I just need to now show that um, it wasn't a fluke and I can, I can be consistently there year on year. So um, the motivation for training is, um, is huge as always. And, um, but for sure it's a different mindset to where I was 12 months ago. Morning. Come on in, we're just going to have breakfast and then head to Deluxe Coffee. It's a nice way to start the day, go and see the Candale boys and then um, head off to the gym. Yeah, it's pretty easy sat here on the, in December in the sun to see why I'd like to come to Stellenbosch to do my training in the winter. It's great to be able to escape the UK winter and ride a great trail network and train in the sun. I realised within a couple of days of first coming here how easy it is to train. First you just get up in the morning, you have some breakfast and then you put your shorts and your t-shirt on and you go for a bike ride. It's so easy to train compared to the UK so I love the area, I love the trails, the food and the vibe is just nice and relaxed so it's perfect. Uh, I first started working with Matt when he was I think 15 years old. Uh, Will Longdon, the team manager, brought him into the team and I was the team coach at that point and Will said, can you start working with Matt as a youngster? And from there really we've gone from 15 years old and a, and a juvenile downhill athlete to, to World Cup champion overall. I'm not a big fan of uh, structured training as a junior. Lots of fun, learning the basics, a uh, little bit on the road, a little bit off road, a little bit on the rollers, introduction to some non-lifting gym stuff, good flexibility and, and most important fun at a junior age and where he got to be uh, world champion. Uh, from that point as an elite, then, then we started to introduce gym work, more structured training, because uh, I, I feel that if you top out as a junior, uh, I mean, there's a, big, there's a big gap to close to the best in the world. Uh.
My downhill bike and my trail bike, I use the same handlebar, the, the Pro Tharsis uh, 3.5, and obviously on the downhill bike, I run the direct mount stem. I feel like with the carbon, the carbon bars, there's enough, they're stable enough, like there's enough um, strength and they're stiff for when you go fast through rough terrain, but they also have enough flex, so you get enough feedback from the trail as well. I think if a bar's too stiff, then you struggle to get the feedback, so Pro have done a really good job to kind of find a balance between the two, and I really like the feeling. On all my bikes, I use the, the Stealth Off-Road saddle. Um, it just fits me really well. In the past, I've tried a few different saddles, and the Stealth Off-Road seems to just kind of work with me really well. I, I can go and do long train rides and it's, it's always comfortable. And especially on a camp like this where you ride in day after day after day, it, um, it, you know, it, it's comfortable. A big goal for Matt in 2021 is to chase that World Cup win. I think it was a blessing in disguise that he didn't actually do that. Um, it's the next step forward for him. It's a good step and uh, excited to see if you can pull that off. In terms of uh, what can I change for Matt in 2021, uh, more motorbike time. He really loves riding his motorbike. I think it gets him away from the day job and he has a lot of fun. Quite a lot of the downhillers go MX, but Matt really loves his, his, uh, his track bike and his track days. I'd like to push more of that into his program, keep him fresh, keep him happy. So the year started pretty good. Like I had high hopes for, for my race in 2020. I kind of came into the off season on a bit of a, in a bit of a hard way, I guess. And my training went really well. Like I stayed injury free and stayed healthy. Um, I, I put a lot of work in and obviously when we heard the news that the first World Cup was going to be cancelled it was uh, really disappointing. It turned out quickly that there's, there's obviously bigger problems in the world than going bike racing so I kept my head down, um, just used the time we had to work as hard as I could. So you know, me and uh, Phil Dixon, my coach, we put a good program together for, for the summer and I kept working and then uh, we finally went to go racing in Leo Gang in Austria for the World Champs, which was always a bit strange having World Champs as a first race of the year. It went pretty well for me. I was real, I was quite nervous going into the weekend because I hadn't felt like I hadn't raced for a long time and I'd put a lot of work in. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get to a race and feel like I'd done all this work and it hadn't really paid off. So I think I qualified top 10, I was eighth, so I was pretty happy with that because going into the year, I wanted to be top 10 and have a couple of podiums. So after the first, you know, that first time run at, at a World Cup, I felt like I could relax. I felt like I was in the right place and um, in better, better circumstances with a better run or whatever, I could I could challenge for podium. So that kind of relaxed me straight away. And then, uh, unfortunately, I crashed on the on the final day in Leo Gang on the race. I think it was just it was just one of them races that turned out to be quite a quite a special one um, with a lot of riders going down. So, um, but I took away what what I needed from that race. It was unfortunate because up until that, that last wooded section, I felt like my splits were good. Um, for sure, I could have challenged for a medal. So um, yeah, I was really, really happy with my pace and how I was feeling on the bike. So I was full of confidence going to Maribor, the first World Cup round. I think in 2019, I struggled a little bit with being overconfident. And that's where the mistakes and the crashes came from, which led to injury and kind of the demise of my season in the second half. Um, but this time around, I really managed to keep a lid on it from a practice day to a qualifying day to a race day, just getting on the bike and just uh, allowing myself to just do it. You know, not think about it too much or overthink it or get stressed, just try and ride as emotionless as I could. And it was really working for me. So I had a fourth and a third at Maribor and I left there second in the overall, which as I said earlier, I was kind of hoping for top 10. Uh, I thought that was definitely achievable, but at the same time, a realistic goal for me. Um, I think at this point in my career to say I was going to win an overall before the year um, is unrealistic and it kind of sets you up to be disappointed. So I always try and keep very realistic goals. So then leaving Maribor with second in the overall, I went to Lusa. We've done a lot of riding there over the last couple of years. Uh, with Fox suspension testing. So I knew I could ride that track well. Um, and then I got a 
second place in the first race and then a third. So uh, it was a bit of a crazy last race. Like halfway through the race, there was some rain. It changed the track quite a lot. So um, it was a difficult one and it was hard to kind of keep your head in the game and uh, try and ride for the championship at that point because I'd taken over the leader's jersey in the first round at loser. But um, for me, I didn't feel any pressure. Uh, I understand that I'm 21 years old and uh, I have, I'll hopefully have plenty more chances to take an overall title. So, and what I was doing was enough. I was just looking after, looking after the single races, and those single races were looking after the championship. I didn't. I felt like coming into that last round, I didn't need to change anything. I just need to go out the gate and ride my bike down the hill again. And it was crazy. Like I, I came across the line, and um, the only information I had before the run was. Uh, from my team manager and he was at the bottom of the hill and he could obviously see that riders were, were going slower as the rain was coming down so he said to me the track looks like it's running slower it could be a little bit slippy but so just kind of go out the gate and feel it for yourself and then push on as much as you feel comfortable with so that's what I did really um, I kind of tried to ride as smart as I could push where I knew the dirt would still be pretty good and where it was slippy just take it a little bit easy um, so when I come across the line with half the field riding in the dry, I didn't expect to be anywhere near the top really. I felt like I had a really good run, and, uh, but I didn't expect the time to be there. So um, yeah, that was really cool and then I didn't really know at that point that I'd won the overall. So I was just so stoked and like the, the emotion that you see on the, on the replay of the race was like just pure emotion for coming across the line and having a good result again. So I was just super happy with that. And then I went over to my manager pretty much straight away and he said, you know, that, that's it, you've done it. Like you've won the overall. And then from that point, I didn't know whether to like laugh or cry or like sit down or stand up. I was just like, the head just, it like fell off my shoulders is the only way to like kind of explain it. It was uh, a crazy feeling, not, not really how I imagined it. Um, I think there was a lot of shock as well. I guess being so young and, and kind of being an underdog, I don't think anyone really would have expected it before uh, before the season. So yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. Uh, here we are in Stellenbosch. This afternoon we're gonna do a sprint session with Matt. So basic skill in downhill mountain bike racing. Um, we're gonna do six to 10 efforts. I'm gonna get some work in the lad and see him suffer. And five, four, three, Two, one, go! Come on, Matt! Up, 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 up! Come on, Matt! All the way up! I think last year, the last couple of efforts, you were kind of ragdolling and treading water. When I'm going up, I don't feel like like my core is much stronger. Yeah. Trying to so I'm not just like wiggling. You've you got know, the crossover trying to get... in your power transfer. Yeah. I think mentally, like the focus is less joking and chatting around. You're really. But mentally committing to your sessions really transfers. I mean, over six months it adds up as we've seen. Yeah. 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 And nothing stupid with it either. Just like you say, just getting the job done. Really. Basics. Yeah. Repetition, getting the job done. Absolutely. Good stuff. Set your shoulders first. Just take your hands off your bars. Set your shoulders. Okay. Good. We're going. This is going to be strongest session yet. Yeah. Building on each one. Ready? Number two, and five, four, three, two, one. Come on, aggression, come on. Come on, Matt, up, up. Come on, Matt, up, up. Good lad. All the way. Was it a Sunday afternoon when he, when he took the overall win? And I was actually at the stables with my daughter. She was riding the horse. And I had the, the, the Red Bull TV on, on the phone. Uh, it was a cool moment. Um, I'd smelt going in the confidence and the shape he had that he would be in the mix. Confidence is a big thing in sport and in downhill bike racing. Um, he had one run to go. I spoke with the team manager Will before. It was the biggest run of his life. And I said, change nothing, keep him laughing. And uh, I heard a little story that he said, the last thing he said to his mechanic before he went down the run was, the gin and tonics are on me tonight. Uh, it was a special moment for me to see him from a 15 year old to get there a nice, nice kind of step forward each year. Uh, and uh, a good reward really for his hard work that he'd put in. 
especially nowadays, I guess as the sport is getting more and more professional, people younger and younger try and um, emulate what the pros do. You know, they get in the gym and they, they lift weights and stuff like that. And for me, that was never on the cards. I always just wanted to have fun. And that does sound cliche, but all through my youth riding and stuff, I just tried, just rode the bike a lot and just enjoyed riding the bike. And I think that is what's gonna keep you in the sport for a long time. If you can, if you can go out and generally say that you enjoy it, and you love doing it, then um, that's what taken me to the top for sure. Like, of course it's hard at times, but being able to deal with that and still being able to get on the downhill bike at the weekend and go, yeah, it was worth it because I love doing this. Then I think that's, that's the mindset to be in. So uh, Matt, how many kilometers do you reckon you've got in you? About 40k. Yeah, okay, there's plenty to go at that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when the when is the fire again? Um, in 2015, it yeah. was one of those fires that started too late in the day and they couldn't control it. But then right around the place, we had like a burn line. So we weren't allowed in a certain area and outside. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, from there, MTO Forestry um, actually got aboard and we're now good partners and have a standing contract for, for maintenance. We're doing some sprint work and some on the bike strength work today. There's 10 efforts and uh, I picked it up. <laughs> good. Let's get okay, we're doing some sprint work, some on the bike strength work, working the accelerations out of the turn for the down or right bike. Yep. Okay, so this afternoon we're working on Max Matt's. So basic skill in ma mountain bike. Oh. Uh, here we are in Stellenbosch. This afternoon we're going to do a sprint session with Matt. So basic skill in downhill mountain bike racing. Um, we're going to do six to ten efforts. I'm going to get some work in the lad and see him suffer. <laughs> 